Hello everyone! Today's video will be about saving and managing large projects. We will look at how to set up a backup archive, enable autosave, organize and handle large projects. You can download the project used during the course from the ArchNXP website under the Intermediate Course section. I open ArchNXP 2024 and by clicking Open Project, I find the ArchNXP Draw folder, locate the 2024 Intermediate Course and open the file Living Room István Kish from the Project Saving and Large Project Management folder. After that, I will save my own version by clicking Save Project As. I will create a project folder within ArchLinexP and save it in a folder named István Kis. Our first topic is the Backup Archive. This tool allows you to restore an older version of your project. It doesn't replace manual saves. For example, if something gets deleted or the file gets damaged, you can recover it. To find it, go to the settings below, then go to Open and Save. Scroll down and you will see the Backup Archive settings. The first option lets you choose whether the program should create backups at all. It's recommended to enable this. Next, you can set the frequency for automatic saves. Then, you can specify where the backups should be saved and how long to keep them. Let's see how the backup archive works. The first save creates a copy of your project state for the day and future saves won't overwrite it, so you will always have a starting point from that day. The archive will overwrite the oldest file if at least 60 minutes have passed since the last save. I will draw three walls and save after drawing each one. Let's see how to recover the last version from the backup archive. Go to the File menu, click on Tools, then Drawing Recovery Manager. You can enter part of the project name, and here are the versions with today's date. I will open the version saved at 2.33 pm. It's missing just one wall. Let's save this to the folder where we have been working. Next, we will cover autosave. This feature helps restore your project with minimal data loss in case of a crash. It's still a good idea to manually save every 10 to 15 minutes because autosave only works during abnormal shutdowns. Go to the settings, go to open and save, and under autosave settings, make sure to enable automatic saving. You can adjust the save frequency in terms of step. For larger projects, it's good to increase this to 30 steps. I will create five walls and you will see the program automatically save in the background. Now let's talk about OneDrive's limitations. ArchNXP cannot fully save project if the file is on a OneDrive synced folder. The file might get damaged because the program can't complete the save. So it's not recommended to save projects to OneDrive. Let's discuss where to install ArchNXP. Make sure that Windows has at least 10% free space for optimal operation. It's best to install ArchLinexP on the C drive under Program Files. The program takes up 3 GB on the C drive. The libraries will use about 5 to 15 GB. When you install, an ArchLinexP Draw and Archive folder will be created in your documents, which also takes space on the C drive. The Archive folder contents are automatically deleted every 4 weeks, but 3 backups are created daily, so its size can increase significantly. If space is limited on the C drive, you can move the Draw and Archive folders to D drive. Just don't touch the files under Program Files or Program Data.
Once done, go to the Open and Save settings and change the file paths to point to D drive. Then restart the program and delete ArchinexP Draw and Archive folders from the C drive. Our next topic is copying project parts. If a client prefers an older version, you can easily copy parts from it into the current project. Open the kitchen from the Kitchen Design Workshop. Select the kitchen, exclude the window, and blind using Ctrl and Paste into the current project with Ctrl C and Ctrl V or use Edit, Copy and Set a Reference Point for Pasting. You can rotate the kitchen here. Next, we will talk about organizing a project. To keep your project organized and easy to manage, we need proper organization. There are two key steps. Using layers and setting up and naming views correctly. First, let's talk about layers. Layers are used to group elements in the project. Since different groups of elements are placed on different layers, we will be able to modify them all at once. With layer variations, we can save different states, allowing us to show room arrangements without needing to open the layer manager. On the left, we will see the base layers created by the program. While on the right, by clicking on the Use Layers, we will only see the layers currently in our project. Here we can see the interior kitchen layers we copied from the previous project. Our goal is to handle the dining and living room separately, so we will create separate layers for them. Additionally, within the rooms, we will handle the furniture, the decorative elements and lighting separately. If we click on all layers, we can create a new layer using the star button. I copy the name bathroom furniture to this layer and rename it to dining room. Next, I create an interior dining room decor layer. Finally, I create an interior dining room lightning layer. Once done, I move the elements to the relevant layers. The living room furniture will go on to the living room layer and the dining room furniture will go on to the dining room layer. I use Ctrl to select the furniture I want to move and then I find the correct layer on the left. I select the furniture in the dining room and place it on the relevant layer. Afterward, I move the lamps to the lighting layer. Finally, I move the decorative elements. Then I repeat the same process in the living room. Once we have layered all the objects in the room, we can use quick layer walkthrough to check if everything is on the correct layer. If we want the 3D to update as well, we can do this by clicking on Update 3D. There are still a few objects that haven't been placed on the correct layer. I move them to the interior kitchen furniture layer and then turn off that layer. Next, I create layer variations in the Layer Properties Management dialog. We will create a base plan where only the architectural elements will appear, as well as a living room and dining room arrangement plan. I will select the Use Layers and by clicking on the plus sign in the Layer Variations, I can create a new variation. 
I right click and rename it. The first one will be the architectural plan. I click on it and set which layer should be turned on when the architectural plan layer variation is active. I will leave the wall and slab layers turned on. Once we have set it, I refresh it by clicking on the update button. Let's create the next layer variation by clicking on the plus button. I rename this to dining room furnishing plan. I click on the new layer variation and turn on the layers I will need. Then I refresh this setting by clicking on the update button. To check, we can click on the new layer variations to make sure only those layers are turned on. We create another layer variation. Let's name this on the living room furnishing plan. I click on it and set the layers using the Shift K for selection, allowing us to turn on the layers at once. Once done, I confirm these settings with OK. At the top of the status bar, I can easily switch between layer variations. Here is the architectural plan, here is the dining room, and here is the living room layer variation. If we want the 3D model to rebuild, we need to click the 3D hammer. The new layers will only be saved in the project. If we want to use our custom layer structure in a new project, we must have it under settings. This can be done by clicking on open and save in the settings and then applying it under save current settings for new projects. Just select the layer structure and if you accept it, the program will save it. Now let's continue with the views. I activate our window and then click on the eye icon. Here I can set the perspective. By clicking on the third icon, I can see the floor plan and using the square markers, I can set the camera's viewpoint, object viewpoint and angle and those move everything. Now I will set a view by clicking on the plus button and name it living room one. Move the viewpoint a little and create a new view. It is worth always logically saving the views, following the clockwise direction, making our views easy to navigate. Now I will save a view in the next room as well, which will be the kitchen. Let's call it kitchen 1. Then turn around and save another view. This one will be kitchen 2. I accept and then let's see where we can switch between views. All views can be found here in the drop down list under view dialog. You can switch between them by clicking on the arrow on the dashboard or the arrows on the status bar. The next topic is handling large projects. First I open the Archive XP Draw folder in the file manager under intermediate course saving projects and managing large projects and let's look at the size. The Kis István living room profile is 29 MB, which is still considered small. For more serious design, this can be even go up to 400 MB. However, if it's even larger, say 800 MB, it's worth checking what made the file so big. The larger the file, the slower we will be able to work on it, and the slower rendering will be as well. Let's see how else can we check the size of our project. Going back to the program under Build 3D, I can see the surface count. This is a project with 132,000 surfaces, which is still considered small. A medium performance computer can handle a project well up to the 1 million surfaces. If this number reaches 2 million surfaces, our work will slow down and the program will send a warning. If the surface count grows further than 5 million, the program will send another warning. Surface limits can be adjusted as needed in the settings. Here we will find when we receive the first and second warnings. Now let's see how we can reduce the size of a project. During design process, the project size can significantly increase. If we have already received a warning regarding the surface count, we must spend time cleaning the project. This consists of four steps. The first step is to delete unnecessary 3D solids. The second and third step involves deleting objects that are too large and those containing too many materials. More than 50 materials are considered too many. 
The fourth step is to delete it unused materials from the project. Let's begin with the first step. Open the Archanix Speed Draw folder and the 3D solid profile. This file contains 3D solids. These solids are created when we model, use them temporarily or fail to save them to the library. Once the project is open, we activate the 3D view and check the surface count by clicking on Build 3D. Currently, there are 164,000 surfaces in this project. Let's see how we can delete unnecessary 3D solids. In the 3D view, select the entire 3D model and on the dashboard, choose the 3D solid option. We can see that there are 76 3D solids in this project. At this point, the program selects them and by clicking on the X, we can delete them from our project. Let's check the surface count again by clicking on Build 3D and we can see that the surface count has been now decreased to 131,000, meaning the size of our project has decreased. Our next topic will be deleting oversized and overly complex objects with too many materials. It may happen that an object downloaded from the 3D warehouse or elsewhere is oversized or contains too many materials. Let's start by deleting oversized objects. For this, I will be open the Kish István Living Room Large Object Profile. Before we begin deleting oversized objects, let's check the surface count. It is currently 135,000. Now we will download an oversized object from 3D Warehouse. I will choose the interior 3D Warehouse and select Direct Download. I look for the Baccarat Zenith Crystal Chandelier. On the left, under the filter, I can set the maximum surface count for the models to display. If I set it to 50,000 surfaces, that is still good. I clear the filter and check this chandelier. We can already see that it contains 60,000 surfaces. I download the Baccarat Zenith Crystal Chandelier and once it is imported into the project, we check its effect on the surface count. I place the chandelier into the model, then check the total surface count again by clicking Build 3D. Now the surface count has jumped to 211,000 surfaces due to the chandelier alone. At this point, we know the chandelier is oversized. One way to handle this is to replace it with a less complex version. Another solution is to simplify the object by reducing the number of surfaces in its geometry to the 3D modeling software or using the built-in simplification tools in Archan XP. Now let's save the file this way so we can compare the project sites after the object is inserted. Let's name it Living Room Large 2. We can check the current file size in the draw folder, which has become significantly larger. Next, we will look at how to reduce the project size. To do this, we need to delete objects with too high surfaces count and those containing too many materials. I activate the 3D view, then choose the annotate, measure and list of elements command. Here we can also check the surface count. If I scroll down, the first group shows the object occupying the most memory, meaning those with the highest surface count. The program lists five elements. If I delete one, the next largest will appear on the list. I select the first one from the list and click on the Show Select Item button. And here I can delete it. In the next group, the elements that use the most materials are listed. Using the same method, if I choose to show the selected element, the program will show me which one it is and I can remove it. After checking the surface count, I see it has decreased to 132,000. I will save this file again under the name Living Room Large Deleted. Once we have deleted those large and overly complex objects, we must also clean up the object library. We can do this by clicking on File Tools Cleaning Object Library. Here we can group the elements by size, that is by complexity. 
We can also sort by last modification or download and even show the objects that use the most materials. I select the crystal chandelier and one other large object using the control and move them to the list of objects to be deleted using the arrow in the middle, then delete them. It's not enough to delete these objects from here because their materials remain in the material library. We need to use the project cleaner to remove them, but first let's check the design center materials in model folder. We can see there are 707 elements inside. Before starting to clean the project materials library, let's save the project so we can restore the original state if something gets lost. Now let's click on File, Tools, Project Cleaner. Here we will find the unused materials. We have 1320 unused materials. Holding down Shift, I select the first and last ones, then move them to the list of elements marked for deletion using the arrow. I will complete the project cleanup by clicking the OK button. Now, if we go back to the project materials in the Design Center, we can see there are only 107 elements left. Now we are sure that only the materials used in the, this project are there. Afterward, it's worth saving and then checking the cleaned file size. Before saving, it is 36 kilobytes. After saving, it is 22 kilobytes. The file size reduced by 14 kilobytes simply by removing the unused materials. To summarize, let's go over how to avoid IT problems. There are a few points to keep in mind, some of which we are already discussed. The first is to check whether our computer meets the program requirements. We can do this by opening the window search and typing dxdiag. Then we run this command and check the screen that appears to see the size of our processor and memory. Here we have an i7 processor and 16 GB of memory, meaning our computer meets the recommended system requirements. If it's smaller than that, it's worth upgrading the computer. If it's larger, the program will run more easily and smoothly. The next point is that using an integrated video card is not recommended. We suggest using a dedicated video card. We should also check the driver date and if it's more than a year old, it's worth updating. The third thing is to keep an eye on is whether we have enough space on the C drive. At least 100 GB should be available on the C drive to ensure enough space for all applications. Next, the project save folder should not be on OneDrive. The fifth point is whether there is a remote element on the floor plan or in the 3D view, or whether the model is far from the origin. Objects located far away can cause computational errors during work. The program will notify us remote elements. We can always see where the origin is on the floor plan, and the program shows how far our mouse is from it in the lower right corner. It's always worth working close to the origin. Another issue can occur if the model surface count is more than 2 million. If that happens, we will work more slowly and with difficulty. Of course, we will also receive a notification when we reach that limit. Objects with more than 50 materials in the plan can also cause problems, as can unused materials which can slow down work. That's why it's important to occasionally clean the project. And the biggest issue, if we are ignoring the notification sent by the program. Always take the program's warning seriously and address the issues and the program will function properly. Thank you very much for watching this presentation and have a great day. Goodbye.